Amen. And uh, as Grant comes forward to lead us in the call to worship, I always like to sometimes remind us why we do what we do when we do our, our calls to worship. It helps us to focus our attention on God. It brings our voices together as the body of Christ. And in particular, today's call to worship comes from Revelation 21, uh, which is appropriate for All Saints Sunday when we uh, remember that God has wiped away all of our tears. And so, as we stand together and recite these words um, from Revelation, uh, let it bring us together as the body of Christ. Sisters and brothers, let us rejoice in the vision of John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old heaven and the old earth and the sea had disappeared. Then I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, descending from God, out of heaven, beautiful as a bride adorned for her husband. A great voice thundered from heaven. See, God is making God's home with mortals. God will live with them. They will be God's people. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All of this gone forever. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning. Oh, don't be seated too fast. 
Don't be seated too fast. I want to welcome you to St. Andrews by the Sea United Methodist Church and invite you to greet your neighbors uh, with an elbow bump, an air high five, however you're comfortable. And as they are doing that, I'll invite our children to come forward for our children's moment. kids and the young at heart to come forward. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Some bright colors up here and sparkling. Anything special going on in anyone's life today? Yeah, really? It's your what? It's your birthday today. Well, happy birthday. And um, how, how old? Seven years old. All right. Very good. Very good. Do you have any advice for us on your, on your birthday in all of your seven years? No. Okay, that's all right, too. That's good. Well, let's see. You did bring the box, so let's see what's in here. All right. These are birthday candles. That's exactly right. There's uh, four, let's see, we got 12 of them. So these are going to last you for another five years or so, right? That's good. And uh, who's ever blown out birthday candles? Yeah, well, they, that's, they're fun, right? Um, now, so have you been here on Christmas Eve when we gather in here on Christmas Eve? I know it's been a while. And, and what do we do with candles on Christmas Eve? We, bl we blow them out, but we light them, and then we share that flame with other people, right? And then all the lights get lit in here. Um, Jesus said, when he was teaching with some people, he looked at them and he said, you are the light of the world. And the light of the world isn't supposed to be hid. You're supposed to share the light of the world. And candles are a good reminder that we can share the light of God with each other because when you pass from one candle to another, the flame goes here, and then it goes to the next one. And with that, we're able to light the entire room. Um, and God wants us to share that light and love with others as well. In fact, there's even a little song about it. You remember the, this little light of mine? In fact, I'm going to put Insook on the spot. Do you think you could play this little light of mine? Just off the top of your head? The mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Or Jens can lead us. There we go. Let's sing it. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. You gotta put your light up. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Good job. Good job. All right. Well, are you going to need these for tonight, or do I, I keep, no, I won't keep them, all right. Let's see, well, we have two households, so I'm going to give it to you. Do you want, yep, yeah. oh, we got some yays back there from mom and dad, that's good. All right, you, you two can decide together on something you want to put in, or you can, you can all figure it out, I'll let the household determine that. So let's have a prayer, and then we'll go to Sunday school. God, thank you for calling us to be your light in the world, and helping us to share that light. Uh, allow us to be your, your servants in this world. Amen. Amen. Did it survive? It did. All right. Uh, well, you f if you'll follow Miss Karen back there, she'll get you guys to Sunday school. Oh, I like your socks. And while they're doing that, oh, did it get stuck in there? <laughs> All right. Uh, I have some announcements to share. Actually, quite a few things to share with you this morning. So let's see if we Pull this up here. All right. 
Um, first off, uh, welcome once again to St. Andrews by the Sea, especially if you're new. If you're new with us and you'd like to find out more about our church, uh, we have a little card you can fill out. You can put your email address on there, and we'll get you on our mailing list. And in fact, is Linda in here? Where's Linda? Oh, there's Linda over there. It's really always hard to know where she is. So, but she'd be happy to give you one of those cards uh, if you'd like to find out more about our church. If she hasn't given you one already, which I'm certain she probably has. So um, let's see. Today is November 7th. November has started. And uh, that means next Sunday we're going to recognize uh, Veterans Day. And as you heard Emily say last week, if you fit into all or part of your uh, uniform and you are a veteran, please, you are welcome to wear it or as, as uh, much of it as you would like to wear. And we will be uh, recognizing our, our veterans and those who serve next week during worship. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, I'm still in my fifth month here now, so we're having all sorts of firsts together uh, as a church. And as you know, this week, if you're on our email list, we had uh, one of our firsts together this week in that we were let know last, uh, last Monday that someone who came to worship had tested positive for COVID. And I wanted to just give you a little more information on that because we had several people ask uh, obviously, privacy issues, we can't share that kind of information, but uh, what I do want you to know is if you only got the email and you weren't personally contacted, you were likely not in contact with the person. Um, we did call those that we knew were in more direct contact just to let them know. So, you know, it was just an overabundance of caution. Uh, likely there was, there was, you know, no problems, but just wanted you to know if, if that goes out again, if you only get the email, all is likely good. So uh, just to let you know about that, what else is happening? Last Sunday was uh, Halloween, and so it's that time of year, you know, and it happens this time of year all the time, it seems. Right after Halloween, all the signs are there. Uh, the emails are starting to come in my box. I know you're getting excited. I'm getting excited. I'm, of course, talking about that United Methodist tradition of charge conference, <laughs> right? I can feel, I mean, every church I have been in, the charge conference is what excites the congregation together. If you're going, what is a charge conference? Um, oh, this is our annual gathering as a United Methodist Church. All United Methodist local congregations have an annual meeting. We do some business of the church. We celebrate the ministries that have happened this year. In particular, this year, we're going to have a video um, that the conference has asked us to make called Parables of the Pandemic. And it talks about how this congregation um, continued to be the presence of God through what we all know was a very difficult year. And so we'll be sharing that video as well. It will be a Zoom charge conference, and that is going to be on November the 16th. That's a Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. I don't know if the link actually went out this week, but if not, the link will be out in our view uh, this week. And so we invite you to uh, join us for that. One last announcement, uh, or really sharing moment. Um, one of the joys of being in a, uh, what I call a family-sized church, you know, where we all kind of know each other, is that we get to celebrate um, and recognize moments in the life of people within the church that we might not be able to do in a, in a larger church setting. And today, if you don't know, and I'm going to just put them on the spot, uh, as I understand it, um, Clark and Carla, it is your last Sunday with us as you are going to be moving uh, to Arizona. Is that correct? Prescott, Arizona. Okay, and we'll get that address so we can share that as well. Um, but uh, they joined, I just, I looked in your, your records, you know, your official United Methodist records. According to our records, they joined about 23 years ago. And we have a little something in common. I found out that you were married the day after my 16th birthday. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that's good news or bad news, but, uh, but you know, so I will always remember your, your anniversary is close to mine. Um, and more important, they've been part of this church. I know, uh, it, it, of course, it's been all different as I've come back, but Carla, I know you did some children's ministries and uh, coffee. Clark used to do coffee. He had agreed to do it again, and of course, then this move is happening. And certainly your work with, um, with the, the military outreach and the families and all of that. So in the United Methodist Church, in our book of worship, 
we have a something for every moment of life. And there is a, a little uh, a prayer and words when uh, congregation members are leaving. And so um, I'd like to go ahead and read this. And then if, if you would, I'll have you stand and we'll offer a word of prayer for you if that'd be okay. So let me read these words from the book of worship. It reminds us that the church is a family united by the common recognition of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We're all brothers and sisters, and for a time, St. Andrews by the Sea is our home. Like every human family, our church family is formed and reformed over time, as members are born, as they die, as members are adopted into our family, and as they leave our congregation for a new home in a different place. And so for a time, Carla and Clark have lived with us, We've shared with each other good times and bad. We've shared each other's sorrows and joys. We've lightened each other's heavy loads. And together we have laughed and cried. And we have worshiped and praised God. And together we have lived as a church family. And so I'll invite you to stand. And if you would all just sort of symbolically aim your hands in this direction as we offer a prayer of blessing for, for both of you. Oh God. You are the strength and protector of your people. We humbly place in your hands Clark and Carla Lashman of this congregation who are about to leave us. Keep and preserve them, O Lord, in all health and safety, both of body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and be, be sure to greet them on the patio because we now have coffee to be able to do that. So... And you get a free cup of coffee this morning, both of you. <laughs> so, all right. This is uh, a Sunday of remembering as well. And it is All Saints Sunday, and it is our first All Saints Sunday together. And this is the Sunday when we remember those uh, who have gone to their eternal home from this church family in the last year. And uh, it is uh, a special day of recognition. We, uh, it is... Typically, it's, well, officially, it's the day after Halloween, uh, but we're celebrating it usually on the Sunday closest to that. And so uh, today we are going to remember those names, and then we're going to give you an opportunity to remember those that may not have been connected with this church congregation, but have also gone home to be with God in the last year. Hear these words. We remember the great ancestors of our faith from Abraham and Sarah, to Paul and Phoebe, ancestors of the faith, we remember you. We remember the prophets and priests, the ministers and teachers who have taught us the way of God. Teachers of the faith, we remember you. We remember our grandparents and parents, aunts and uncles, those who have gone before us in our lifetime. Family of our faith, we remember you. We lift up the memories of children and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, and parents whose lives ended too soon. Those close in our heart, we remember you. We lift up to you, O God, the names of those we have lost in this past year from our lives, knowing that they are with your heart forever. And all God's children said, Amen. And so, uh, in just a moment, um, I will light a candle uh, for each of our church members uh, whom we have lost in the last year. I will say their name, and then I will say, absent from our midst, and your response is present with God, to which we will then toll the bell and then move on to our next name. Um, at the end, once we've named all of our, our, um, our church members, uh, I'm going to offer an open space where you may just speak a name, and it will be a little muddled and we won't hear them all, but to just speak a name of anyone that you may have lost in the last year that we want to recognize. Um, and we'll just say all those names in that moment, I'll give that a moment, and then we'll respond uh, present with God and light the candle. So let us join together as we remember these individuals who made St. Andrew's their church home and have made this church what it is. Jake Valstar, 
absent from our midst. Sally Lee Howd, absent from our midst. Bill Saberin, absent from our midst. Bob Crittenden, absent from our midst. Don Stroop, absent from our midst. Roger Townsend, absent from our midst. Present with God. And now, God, hear these names that we speak. Jerry Carter. Absent from our midst. Let's be in prayer. Lord, we bless your holy name for all of your servants who have finished their course in faith and who now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness, to know that as they crossed from life into death, they crossed into new life with you, where you welcomed them home and said, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. I'll invite you now to stand as you are able, as we uh, remember those by singing for all the saints. Let's stand together. From the labors around. be seated.
we take a moment to be in prayer uh, together. We're, we're going to be talking about uh, gratitude uh, for the next few weeks in this uh, new sermon series. Um, but, but I'm also reminded, uh, I don't know what your week was like, but we, we had a, a heavy week of some things going on, and, um, you know, life just has its stuff. And uh, I was reading a passage in Luke, Luke chapter 7, when um, Jesus is passing through, through some crowds. I'm just going to read it real quick here, uh, verses 11 through 13. Soon afterwards, Jesus went down to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. And as he approached the gate of a town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, do not weep. Compassion. The word literally means to suffer with. And this week, I think it's as we remember those that we have lost, um, as we continue to be in challenging times, to remember that Jesus is with us in that he understands our suffering. He suffers with us and knows what we are going through. And sometimes that that is the good news in the midst of pain. So let's, uh, let's be in prayer as we uh, remember Jesus' compassion for us. Lord, we come to you today to worship. We come as the body of Christ, as uh, St. Andrew's by the Sea, United Methodist Church. We gather in this place. But we know we've all come from moments this week. Moments that have been good, but also moments that have challenged us. Moments where we have felt the weight sometimes of the world, the weight of our own lives. Even as we come this morning to remember those that we have lost. We come to you, Lord, knowing that you know what it is like that Jesus knew what it was like to weep, to lose a friend, to feel betrayed, to feel alone. God, you became one of us so that you would understand us and remind us that your love is stronger than any of those challenges. And that although the hard times may not get erased away, that you are with us. Your steadfast love endures forever. And in this moment, for that, we are grateful. And God, when our own words fail us, you have given us these words that we now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
today's scripture reading comes from Psalm 136. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. O give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who spread out the earth on the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever, and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the scriptures. Thanks be to God. So you may notice that, uh, that the Petties are not here this morning, uh, and that's because they're in Colorado uh, celebrating uh, David Petty's ordination as uh, a United Methodist pastor. And I know that um, not only when they served here, that David worked on staff here, I believe, um, in several different roles. And so uh, yesterday, uh, the bishop laid hands upon him. and. I, I, believe he, I believe it was his elder's ordination. Yes, so he is now a, a full elder in the United Methodist Church. So a word of, of celebration for, uh, for their family. Let's, uh, let's be in prayer. God, thank you for um, the Psalms that remind us of all of life's wonders, uh, both the difficult times and the joyous times, and that it is your steadfast love that endures forever throughout them all. For this we are grateful. Allow us to hear your spirit through these words this morning. Amen. So we are starting a series called uh, Thank You Notes that we're going to uh, appropriate for uh, the month of November as we're getting closer to Thanksgiving, which is in what, two weeks, three weeks, I think? Um, too soon, I know that. So uh, we're going to talk about being grateful over the next few weeks. And I, I want to start by, th this goes back to a story I read, it's probably been four or five years ago, I think it was around 2016, and I, I started thinking as I was looking this story up again this week, I hope that uh, this man is still doing what he was doing here, or that he retired happily at least. So, um, but I want to introduce you to Ruben Pardo, and uh, Ruben Pardo, for over 40 years, uh, had was one of the elev the only men in LA that was still steering an elevator, if you will. He was an elevator man in a building uh, in downtown Wilshire area, and for 40 years, every day, Reuben would go to his elevator and literally was the elevator man. I, I didn't realize this, but but he actually had to stop it so that it lined up evenly, and he was he was the best at it. There's actually a little documentary you can find about uh, Reuben that's on YouTube. But, but what was unique about him wasn't his skill with an elevator. It was his sense of joy and gratitude. Um, joy and gratitude. He, he recognized, he said, I, I have a small little world, um, but he loves it. And each day I go in, I celebrate joy and gratitude, and his purpose was to bring that joy and gratitude to those uh, whom he met. And most of the people that worked in this office building 
um, were, were younger than the number of years he had been serving in that elevator. Uh, and he would greet them each and every day with, with joy and gratitude. But what struck me, I remember when I read this article the very first time, was that he worked six days a week, rarely took vacations, but every Sunday, without exception, he would take his wife out to dinner. I think they went to the same restaurant each and every time. And he did this as a gesture of gratitude to her for sharing her love and her life with him. One of the people that rode that elevator each and every day said he is like a glass of fresh water every morning. I don't know how he does it, but every day for him just seems to be a great, bright opportunity for something. It's gratitude. Gratitude makes the difference in him. And I think we've all met people like that, that just seem to have that sense of overwhelming gratitude that pours forth from them. And what we know is that gratitude changes who we are. It can change our outlook and truthfully can change the world. Researchers, and I don't know who does this, I always wonder, like, who are the people? But researchers say that Americans say thank you some 2,000 times a year. How they calculate that, I don't know, but I took that to say that we say thank you about 5.479 times a day. <laughs> um, maybe you say it more, perhaps we, we say it a little more than that. But a lot of times we say thank you right out of habit. It's just, it's sort of that response we have. Someone hands you this, oh, thank you very much. It's not insincere, it's just, it's just what we do. But the study did discover that a lot of times our thank yous are simply out of habit. You know, we learn thank you early on. We learn it right after the magic word, which the magic word is please. Please, see, you all know it. And then <laughs> we learn that thank you comes right after that. Thank you. Please, these things that we just say in life. But think about it. To offer thanks is to appreciate what we have been given. It's not the same as a sense of indebtedness or whether we're obligated. It is gratitude for something that we simply don't owe anything for. It is just to be grateful for what we have. It's a part of our religious life. Um, not only our life as Christians, but it's a part of, of most religious traditions, whether it's Christian or Buddhist or Muslim or Jewish or the Baha'i faith or um, Hindu traditions, Buddhist traditions. Gratitude is a part of all of those. In fact, um, the, the last church that I served at Thanksgiving, you know, oftentimes um, congregations will have a Thanksgiving service with a local temple. But this church had not only a Thanksgiving celebration with the temple, but also with the Islamic mosque in the area because gratitude and thankfulness and service was one of the things that we all had in common. Now, there's all kinds of different thanks. Um, there is the, uh, as I said, the polite thank you when somebody hands you your coffee or does those things. We mean that, but it's not, it's not that in-depth kind of thank you. Uh, there's a great little book, if you ever want to read a, a great little book on prayer, it's written by Anne Lamott, and, um, because she says the three essential prayers are help, thanks, and wow. And thanks, she talks about a couple of different prayers of thanks. There is the one that she describes as, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is the sort of gratitude that happens when we've just missed something. It's uh, thank you, thank you, thank you that the highway patrol person didn't see how fast I was going, right? <laughs> or it's thank you, thank you, thank you that the cup that we had didn't spill like my coffee cup did on the computer table this week. I didn't get to say thank you, thank you, thank you after that. Um, or that, that, you know, the dog didn't get hit by the car when it was running out there. All of those little things where we just, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and then there's the kind of prayer she says that is the sort of, thank you. Those are the ones when we have found our passport an hour before we're supposed to leave for the airport. Thank you. Thank you that the brakes held. Thank you that the test results came back negative. Thank you that this person forgave you. Thank you. But that gratitude, she writes, opens us up 
to God. When we have a, a perspective of gratitude and thankfulness, I believe for us as people of faith, it opens us up to God. It opens us up to be grateful to God, to be grateful for what we have, to remind us of the thin place between God and humanity, between heaven and earth, between birth and the grave, <coughs> to be grateful for each and every moment. We say that kind of thing, but to really truly be grateful for each and every moment. Just in looking up things about gratitude, um, you know, here's, here's a person we, we would think might have a, a tough time being grateful, but um, Helen Keller, uh, who um, you, you all know, she said, so much has been given to me that I have no time to ponder that which I don't have. And you think about all of the challenges she had in life. Um, I actually, I get sidetracked a lot of times, so I was working on this this week and I'd found that quote and then I thought, I wonder, is there any like video footage of Helen Keller? And there is. So I watched um, some footage of her online speaking as she is able to speak and just the joy that you see in her face um, it was just overwhelming. Gratitude. The scriptures call us to say thanks. We're, we're called to be thankful. Uh, the Hebrew scriptures are filled with calls to be thankful to God. Uh, the, the, the Jewish festivals are often centered around being grateful to God, thankful. Um, Jesus gave thanks for bread and for the cup. Jesus gave thanks for hearing God's cry to raise Lazarus from the dead. Paul talks about being thankful for his congregations. Um, he, you know, talks about praying God and thanking God constantly. So clearly it is important. And I'll tell you, I, I chose Psalm 136 because this is kind of like a thank you note to God um, when the psalmist wrote it. And, and just to hear some of these things, give thanks to the Lord for God is good. Give thanks to the God of gods, like the number one God. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, who alone does great wonders, who spread out the earth, who made the great lights to rule over the day. Um, the section we didn't read is uh, 10, verses 10 through 22 is an entire recounting of the Exodus story, where the psalmist is thankful that God brought them out of slavery into freedom. It is God who remembers us in our lowest state, who rescues us, who gives food to all flesh. Give thanks to the God of heaven. Give thanks to the God of heaven. And then each and every response is his steadfast love endures forever. So I'm going to teach you a, a Hebrew word this morning uh, because that phrase, we see that throughout the Psalms, uh, his steadfast love endures forever, is trying to capture the essence of a word that we can't really translate well into English. Uh, and the word is chesed. Uh, there we have it, yeah, chesed which you get to kind of do that thing, you know, chesed. But it means, um, it, it means kindness, it means loving kindness, it means mercy, it means loyalty. It is a kind of love that is based on a, a covenant commitment where we are connected to one another through our word. It is a love that is loyal and faithful. Uh, at its root, uh, chesed has this essence of an eager and ardent desire to love. Uh, some of the ways that it gets translated in the different Bible translations, um, the New Revised Standard is obvious, his steadfast love endures forever. The NIV, his love endures forever. The King James, his mercy endureth forever. Um, the message, his love never quits. Um, New American Standard, his loving kindness is everlasting. Uh, one that I saw that I don't, I don't think it's in a Bible translation, but I like this one. It's a love that will not let go. A love that will not let go. It's used most of the time to describe God's love, but actually in the case of the story of Ruth and Naomi, if you remember, Naomi is going to go back to her home uh, and leave her daughter-in-law Ruth, who has lost uh, her husband, and Naomi um, is going back, and Ruth says, I will go with you. My love will not let you go. And it's one of the times that chesed is used in reference to human beings. 
This is what we are thankful for. God's love that will not let us go. So we're grateful. The Bible says to be grateful. But I want to give you some reasons, even outside of Scripture, that gratitude is good for us. Um, there is at UC Davis uh, a professor that for many, many years uh, is the leading scientific expert, if you will, on gratitude. Again, didn't know that this uh, job was available, but um, <laughs> Robert Emmons uh, is a leading expert on gratitude. And in a series of, of studies, uh, he, he studied gratitude and more importantly, how to instill gratitude in people. Um, to cultivate gratitude, usually by keeping a gratitude journal uh, in which they would intentionally write, and they found that after three weeks of doing that, they saw changes. And the results were sometimes overwhelming. In fact, in one study, they studied more than a thousand people from ages eight to 80. And they found that people who practiced gratitude and practiced this, this gratitude um, remembrance had these results. There were physical results. They had stronger immune systems. They were less bothered by aches and pains. Notice it doesn't say they went away, but they were less bothered by them, right? <laughs> the lower blood pressure, that's always good. Ex they would exercise more. They took better care of their health. They slept longer and felt more refreshed upon waking. Psychologically, they had higher levels of positive emotions. They were more alert, more alive, more awake. They experienced more joy and pleasure and more optimism and happiness. Socially, they were more helpful to people and generous and compassionate. Lord knows we could use that right now. More forgiving, more outgoing. They felt less lonely and less isolated. It changed how they interacted with the world. Um, he defines gratitude in this way. It's an affirmation of goodness where we affirm that there is a good thing, that this good thing has happened in our lives, doesn't mean life is perfect, but, but we affirm that there is goodness in our life in, in some way, shape, or form. And the second part of it is that gratitude is figuring out where that goodness comes from. Um, it's recognizing it in other people. It's recognizing our dependence upon other people. It's recognizing for us as people of faith that goodness comes from God, that we have been blessed with this creation. Gratitude changes us. So this week, I, I just wanted to kind of give us this sense, this overall look of, of gratitude and how it affects us. Um, and I, I want to leave you with one last um, inspiring person of gratitude. Um, and that is, uh, I'm sure you've heard of, of the Holocaust survivor, Elie Wiesel, and um, who survived things we can only imagine. And if you've read any of his writings, you know that they center on gratitude. So here's a transcript of an interview that he did with Oprah Winfrey a, a few years back. I, find it, I tried to find it, and I couldn't, I couldn't find it, so I only have the transcript of it. But um, Oprah asks uh, Ellie, there may be no better person than you to speak about living with gratitude. Despite all the tragedy you've witnessed, do you still have a place inside for gratefulness? To which he responded, absolutely. Right after the war, I went around telling people, thank you just for living, for being human. And to this day, the words that come most frequently from my lips are, thank you. When a person doesn't have gratitude, something is missing in his or her humanity. A person can almost be defined by his or her attitude towards gratitude. Oprah then asked, does having seen the worst of humanity make you more grateful for ordinary occurrences? And he responded, for me, every hour is grace, and I feel gratitude in my heart each time I can meet someone and look at his or her smile. So the point is this, we can all experience gratitude in some way, shape, or form, and it will change who we are. So uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do this over the next few weeks. We have uh, prepared our very own St. Andrews-by-the-Sea gratitude journals. 
uh, for each and every one of you to take one. In fact, I think we probably have enough. You can take one for somebody else if you know someone that, that needs it. Um, and I'll, I'll put them out there uh, when we close worship. But I want to invite you to, to literally, and the, the way they have them do it is this. It's to write three things down that you're grateful for uh, each day. Three things down. And you'll be surprised as you look through your day, and you can write more than three, but, but three is sort of their magic number. Um, as you look back and you're grateful for things, it just changes your focus. Uh, I've been doing it the last about uh, three days. And it does, it just reminds me, oh yeah, that was a really good thing today. That was a really special moment today. So um, for the next three weeks, the next three sermons, uh, we are gonna practice gratitude. So uh, we'll have these out and you can grab one on your way out. And uh, I invite you into this practice of being grateful for all that God has given. Amen. And speaking of gratitude, we are grateful for um, the gifts that continue to help keep this congregation going forward, for your gifts and offerings. And we're going to stand now together and sing the doxology uh, in gratitude. <laughs>
somebody that you know or is a neighbors with someone and can get them to them, that would be great. Um, if not, we'll, we'll call them uh, in the office uh, later this week, but just wanted to let you know that as well. And also, I was told to get a picture of it, so I'm going to make my daughter come up and take a picture of it and just have it and turn it away from the office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to do that, that would be great. That's going to be in the past week, though. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Holy ground, we turn in holy ground or we keep.